system here that I love to use because it's so encompassing. And, um, you know, I think all the realtors have access to it. They just don't use it. They don't understand it. It does, it has a learning curve to it. But I do think once you do get uh, this, you know, under your belt, you can share so much information with a client about their home. And what I kind of look at first is I kind of get an idea of what their house actually does look like. I could go back into MLS. This is MLS right here. And this is everything that is fairly normal for what you're going to see when you go on MLS and you're trying to get a, a snapshot of what's going on in your marketplace. Uh, so basically when I look at this through MLS, this is called Netra's uh, matrix system. Realtors will, this is kind of the go-to, this is the lazy man's way of doing it, but I think that you have to have a combination of both, okay? If I look at your property and I take in a one mile radius, see this right here, which I think is the most reliable source, I put in your address right here. So it gives me kind of a map. I'm only looking at the single family. I don't want to throw in townhomes or anything else that you see sometimes out there in, in Craig Ranch. And I only want houses that are like less than 3,800 square feet because yours is not 3,800 square feet. But when an appraiser looks at your property, they're not gonna look at anything that's a thousand square feet more or a thousand square feet less because they have to adjust for it too much. And anytime an appraiser has to adjust for something too much, there's a major explanation going on with that. And I can promise you they're not getting paid enough to have to go through that explanation. They always work from the inside out. So if they have to go outside a certain range, the chances are that they're not gonna use it to comp your house against. And that's the hardest thing for sellers to kind of wrap their heads around sometimes is, well, why isn't my house worth, you know, 750,000 because that one's four streets over. Well, it's, you know, 1,500 square feet bigger than yours, right? And a one story versus a two story can have a huge impact. Or if you back up to a major street versus an interior lot can have a major impact. So what I did was I narrowed this down for square footage and then I got a result of about 52 properties. This is a list of them all. So I get them lined out and I looked at, I look at the actives. I look at the, uh, these two are brand new on the market. This one just had a, a price change. So they mm -hmm. adjusted it. Don't be, um, just because it says price change does not necessarily mean it went down. Because in a market that's going up, it may have gone up. Sometimes that's good to share with the seller because then they get an indication that the market is going up. Um, these right here are called active contingent or active options. So these are under contract. They're in their due diligence period. This is active contingent. If it's contingent, it could be a contingent kickout. It could be contingent upon financing. It just depends. These right here, when I see an expired, it's a test market. They threw it out there, maybe to work, maybe it don't work, or something got sideways, the listing expired, but those prices didn't work. These are actually pending. They've got their financing through. They're just waiting to go to closing. And then the rest of these are all sold. And when I look at this, if you look back at the criteria, I only want to look at these pendings or solds that are in the last six months because that's the way an appraiser is going to look at it. Okay. So if you look at anything outside that, again, that appraiser is going to have to find a way to explain it. And with a master plans community, they're not going to do that. They're, unless you've got something that is just massive over the top, they're not going to give you credit for it. If you've got hand scraped hardwood floors, I'll give you a little bit. If you've got some $15,000 oven that you just put in, you know, fancy, crazy oven that you just put in, 
they'll give you a little bit of credit for that. But they're not gonna give you credit for the $30,000 worth of custom draperies that you put in there. They're just not gonna do it. So anything that you put in that's kind of a personal upgrade or improvement, you generally will not get the money that you think you will, not dollar for dollar. And every day that it's actually used, believe it or not, in their brains, it's not worth as much as you think it is. <laughs> so I try to help people understand that. Fortunately, a majority of the stuff there is, uh, you know, pretty new. Okay, so here's your results. So if I come down here, and I like this because people can see it kind of like really quickly and real easily. All right, so this kind of breaks it down to what your competition is. And what you have to watch for though, because your house was built in 2017, is you have to watch for staying away from brand new construction because appraisers won't allow you to comp against brand new construction. Um, you can, first of all, look at this. A CDOM is a cumulative days. So back in the day, we could expire a listing or cancel a listing and we would pop it back on the MLS and it would come back on as a new listing, right? Well, that doesn't happen anymore. Um, you now have what's called a CDOM, which is cumulative days. So this property that's been on the market for 253 days could have been three different realtors but it's gonna tell you how many days it's been active in MLS. You wanna take that into consideration. The reality is, is that this number right here is about 73 days average. And I'm gonna say it's probably a whole lot less than that if you kick this particular property out, okay? Mm -hmm. And I don't know the real reason that that's been on the market for so long, but it could be something as simple as a difficult seller. No joke. It could be a difficult seller that just, you know, they won't, they're, they, they just won't work with you. Or number one reason, they got pet. Mm. You got a pet? You do have a pet. I do. <laughs> How's your dog doing? Uh, she's doing good. Good. All right. So we've got active contingents, um, active options. These are all properties that that you want to take a look at and see how your property compares with them. Here's one that's in 2017. It's a lot smaller. It's only 2,300 square feet. Um, but it does give you an idea of how long that property actually stayed on the market. Keep going. You've got your pendings and your solds. To me, a sold is like the black and white of what you're having to deal with. None of these properties have um, pools. But the one thing that's kicked in here that I think could be a huge problem for you is you're starting to see these 2020s kick in of what mm -hmm. those values. Now, as a realtor, I want to look at that because I want to look at the potential of where you may be going. And when I look at these 2020s, I'm looking and seeing how long they've been on the market as well. Does that make sense? Yeah. So you go back and you look at your square footage, 3296 is what you've got. 32.96, then you look down here, case kind of like at your averages of what you're seeing in this particular neighborhood. And if you see that 2020, you can see about how much they're getting price per square foot. But here's the thing most people don't look at. This is the price that it was actually listed at, Sarah. Mm -hmm. This is the price that it actually sold for. So on average, you're looking at between 84 and 104 percent of the sales price. But if you put it on at 450, your chances are you're going to get somewhere between 95 to 97 percent of asking price, depending on where you are in the market. Right now, you're at a pretty good sweet spot of the market if you uh, decided to sell your property. With an average of 2016, and $156 a foot, that can give you a pretty close uh, course of what your house would sell for. Okay. Take all of that information and go back to RPR. 
and look at where you fall as far as an RVM, which is a retail market value. And this is super wide here. So you're gonna to have to narrow that down and look at the real comp analysis on that. And this is where we'll go through and we will look at some refined value. And most realtors don't go through this. But if you've got something that will give you uh, an idea of what's going on that you've done to that house, like you ripped out the kitchen and you put a brand new kitchen in it, whatever. Um, but let's look at this local market conditions, they're average. Well, actually right now in Craig Ranch, they're a little above average. However, you have done something to the exterior to make it nicer than the other properties. So there's a sliding scale that you can give to that for the sellability. Does that make sense? Huh. And the home's interior. I mean, does it have a designer effect? Is it picture perfect quality? You know, how would it compare to the other houses? Are there uh, custom shades or is there anything that would set yours apart? Um, we have wood shutters through the whole downstairs. Okay, so let's give it some money for that. And is there anything special about your lot? Like that's a high priority about your lot. Let's just say if it's set across from a park or it, it was on a green belt or it was on the golf course or something about that lot that made it a little bit different than these others where it was a premium lot, that would get you more money. So the lot size is not a lot. The view is pretty much in line. Privacy is about the same, but that does give you some value to what you're trying to, to sell the house for. And then coming back and looking at this again and saying, you know, it's a two story house. That's the first thing that jumps out at me. The second thing that would jump out at me is where is the master? Is it up or down? Master's down. Perfect, okay. Note to self, never buy a house where the master is upstairs. Um, makes it a hundred times harder to sell. So we've confirmed the facts about the property. You feel good about the information that we've got here. And then um, we've made the adjustments and now we're gonna find some comps for your property, which is kind of what we did on the other side. Um, but this kind of narrows it down and throws them into the report. So these are properties that like recently sold and you can kind of see what they're going on the market for, what they've actually sold for. You've got one that just sold here in July, which is really good. Um, but the thing about this particular house, it was a brand new build and it was built to 2020. So everything that we're seeing on this list until we get down to about right here was built brand new 2020. But the one good thing is, is I'm not seeing a huge difference between these that have sold, like this one sold for 175, this one was 140. Um, that's a that's a that's a hard thing. I mean, it's kind of like when I can sell you a brand new car, or I can sell you a used car. Which one are you going to choose? So when you're in a neighborhood where properties are already built, the one thing you've got going for you is the fact you don't have to wait nine months for your house to be built. And I think that's what really helps existing sales, okay? So if you get down here and you start looking at the 2020s, this is one that was included in your RVM. It's pretty, it's a lot smaller than yours, but it still is a four bedroom. This one is 2019, 3,600 square feet, 2020, 2020, all new builds. Here we go, 2017, um, 2017, 2019, even though that was not, brand new, it's still, it was new, but it was not in 2020, let's just say. 2014 is a much bigger house, but this is so far outside of what your house would be. It's probably got some kind of craziness with it because it was um, over a million dollars. Um, then these particular homes, 3,000 square feet, a little bit older, but still good on the square footage. Um, so you see where I'm going with this? on getting really close to size and age of the property and try to stay away from things that are too old because a, an appraiser will go towards things that are closer in age and closer in size before he starts moving away from that. Okay, that's what it is. Yep. So look at this. 
And then, you know, we've got the, we've got the comps, we've adjusted uh, those comps. We can go back here. And I think this is really unique. And this is what really does take some time. So you go back and I have 10 really good comps and I start looking at each and every one of these pictures. So I'm not gonna take you through this full process, but this is what I do when I know what your house looks like. And I'm, I'm now going through each one of these properties and I'm like, okay, well, that one's got carpet in the living room and you know, they're, they're not showing me much. So what's going on there? Um, this one, pretty boxy. How long was it on the market? That sort of thing. Well, I don't really like that one because I don't think it's a good comparison for yours. So I'm just going to take it out. Does that make sense? Yeah. So I go through each one of these and I'm thinking, well, how does my property, yours, compare to this property? Okay. So I keep going through this and I'll update it back and forth. And then when it comes down to it, I can look at all the comparisons there and I can see this little bit of an adjustment. And then I'm going to get a range. This is a pretty wide range. If I saw this range, I would probably go back in and tweak it again. But for time's sake, I'm going to create a report for you so you can just kind of see it. This is a property report that I share with the owners. So, okay, here's what your report looks like. And uh, believe it or not, this, this report is 33 pages long. So if you can't sleep tonight and you need something, this would probably help you. But me, I'm kind of a numbers person. Mm -hmm. So I love looking at these numbers. Okay, so then this is just kind of a, an estimate. This is kind of the first page where people stop and they go, okay, this is it. But this is kind of your analysis of your comp range. So the most important thing you're going to put on your house is an accurate price to sell it. And then choosing that realtor to back it up is going to be the second most important decision that you make. But the estimates are coming in for me between 540 and 560. So picking this number is probably closer to what you're looking at. And I would probably start that house out somewhere between 550 and 560. 